Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Nai. Today we are going to discuss about ambiguity of grammar. As you know, in this channel we produce every video in two different language. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So, let us start. In our previous video, we have already discussed about what is grammar, what is context-free grammar, how to represent a context-free grammar. In this video, we are going to talk about ambiguity. But before we start, just take a recall. Why grammar is used? Basically, grammar is used to generate the strings in the language and it is also used to recognize the string. Basically, finding the derivation of a string is known as parsing and parsing a string means recognizing a string so when we use a tree structure to generate a string it is called a parse tree or a derivation tree we have already learned what is a derivation tree to refresh it let us see it once more a derivation tree is a order tree in which the interior node are leveled with the left side of the production and in which the children of the node represents its corresponding right child. So basically to represent we use a root vertex, interior vertex or vertex, then leaf and the rules that we are going to represent. The root vertex is nothing but the starting symbol of the grammar. The vertex is the non-terminal symbol or the left hand side of the production rule. And the leaf node are the terminal symbol or epsilon. And the rule is for a production of this type A derives A1, A2, An. Then this variable A will be a intermediate vertex and A1, A2, An will be its leaf nodes. Let us try to see this with the help of an example. Let us say V contains the variable S. The terminal symbols are A and B and the productions are S derive A, S, B, S derive S and S and S derive Epsilon. Here S is the starting symbol and we want to generate the string A, A, B, B. Then what we are going to do? We are going to start with the starting symbol S. Now S derive A, S, B. So we want a A. So we can use A, S, B. So its children are A, S, B we have written. Again, S is a variable and for this variable, which production we can use? We can use A, S, B again to find two A's. So for this A, I am writing A, S, B. And for this S, Epsilon is written. Means we are having A, A and B, B. So as we have already discussed, the variables or the left hand side of the production will always be the intermediate vertex or it can be the starting vertex. But whatever they are on the right hand side, it will always be the children of the variable which is there on the left hand side. We have already seen this. To derive a tree, we can have two different type of derivation. One is a leftmost derivation and another is rightmost derivation. So what is a leftmost derivation? While deriving a string, if we apply the production to the leftmost variable in each step, we say it is a leftmost derivation. Similarly with the rightmost derivation, when we are applying the production to the rightmost variable in each step, we say it is a rightmost derivation. Let us see them with the help of an example. Let us say the grammar G contain variable S and A and terminal symbol 0 and 1. P is the production rule and S is the starting symbol. And P is defined in this way. S derive 0 A S or 0, A derive S1 A or SS or 0 1. Let us say we want to use leftmost derivation to generate the string 0 0 1 1 0 0. We have to start with the starting symbol. So the starting symbol is S. To generate a 0, I can use this one or I can use 0 AS. Obviously, if I use a single 0, it will terminate over there. So I have to use 
zero a s. And here the leftmost variable is a. For a, I have to use some more production. For a, I can use the production s one a. Here there are three variables. Out of these three variables, s is the leftmost. And again for this s, I need to substitute. So I can use s derived zero. So in place of s, I can write zero. Again, here I am having two variable a and s, and out of these two, a is the leftmost. So in place of a, I can use one and zero. So I got zero zero one one and zero. So in place of s, if I get zero, then my derivation is over. Now in this string, I am having only one variable s. So I can use the leftmost derivation and I can get this string that is 0, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 0. Let us try to understand rightmost derivation with the help of the same example. Let us try to derive 0, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 0. So we have to start with the starting symbol 0, A and S. Here there are two variables A and S where S is the rightmost variable. And in place of S, I can substitute any of the things. So in place of S, I can substitute 0. Now, my string contain 0, A and 0. And only one variable A is there. That I need to use some production. For this A, I can use S, 1, A. There are two variables here, S and A. And A is the rightmost variable. For this A, I can use 1 and 0. So I got 0, S, 1, 1, 0, 0. And in this string, S is the only one variable. So for this S, I can write 0 and I got the string derived. I hope you understood what is a leftmost derivation and what is a rightmost derivation. Let us try to understand what is a derivation tree. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. A context-free grammar is given over the alphabet A and the production is S derived, S plus S or S star S or S or A. As we already know, whatever is written in the capital letter are my variables. Here only S is written in capital letters. So S is the only variable. And whatever the other symbol available, that is plus, star and A are the terminal symbol. And I want to generate A plus A star A. So I have to start with the starting symbol. I can use S plus S. So S plus S I have used. Now for leftmost derivation, I can use this left hand side S. For this left hand side S, I can use the derivation S derived A. Plus is as usual there. For the right hand side S, I can use S star S. Now for this S, I can write A. And for this right and for this S also I can write A. So I got A plus A star A, which is derived. This is the leftmost derivation for this particular string. Now let us see the rightmost derivation. S is the starting symbol. Then I am using the production S derived S star S. This one. On the right hand side I am having S. So for this S I can write S derived A. Star is a terminal symbol. I cannot do anything. For this variable S, I can write S plus S. Again, in this, the rightmost variable is this particular S. For this, I can write A. And for this S, I can write A. So I got A plus A star A. So this is a rightmost derivation. You can see this string A plus A star A, I have derived in two different ways. In leftmost derivation as well as in rightmost derivation. Now let us see what is ambiguity. A context free language I'll say is an ambiguous language if there is at least one string which can be generated or derived by more than one way or there exist two or more leftmost or rightmost derivation for the same string. Let us try to understand this with the help of our previous example. So I'm having S derived S plus S for this particular S, I can write A. For this particular S, I can write S star S. Now for this S, it is A. And for this S, it is A. Now I got 
a leftmost derivation that is a plus a star a. Okay, let us try to derive the same with the another leftmost derivation. Now we are having s. For this s, I can have s star s. For this s, I can write s plus s. For this s, it is a. And for this s, it is a. And for this s, it is a. Again, it is a leftmost derivation. For the same string a plus a star a, I got two different leftmost derivation. So I'll say the grammar that is given to me is an ambiguous grammar. I hope you understood what is parsing, what is leftmost and rightmost derivation, and how we find ambiguity in a grammar. If you understood this, give me a like and share among your friends. In our next video, we are going to talk about how to eliminate ambiguity from a grammar. So see you then. Take care. Bye.